All right, guys, what's up? Uh, today we're going to be doing version two of how to winterize your uh, Coleman Lantern LT17B. Um, this may apply to your camper as well, even if it's not a 17B. So uh, let's get into this and see what all we need to do. So first off, you're going to need some sort of antifreeze and then uh, various amounts of uh, different bits. Um, we needed a Phillips for these little bitty screws to remove a couple different panels. And then I also had, I took the bed apart. Um, and this was just for ease of showing you guys what to do. Before we get to um, doing that, that part, you're gonna first need to um, drain all the lines out as best you can. Um, we're not gonna do compressed air on this one. So if you guys are worried about getting an air compressor or whatever, trying to hook it up, um, get a, find a fitting for it. You don't have to do it this time. Um, if you just bleed your lines out and that just consists of dropping um, the little caps off of your low points and then coming through and opening all the valves on everything, the sink, the shower and then just holding down the flusher on the toilet and that's about it on the lines and then you also need to make sure that you drain your water heater um, and it takes an inch and a sixteenth to pull the anode rod out and then you also need to before you pull the anode rod out you need to relieve the pressure on the water heater itself and then once you get all of that done um, and I guess I could run through that real fast. Like I said, it was pretty simple. Uh, you just come and pull these two little caps off of here and you can see all the water that's on the ground that came out. Um, but that's about it there. And then the water heater, I put this little bolt on here to make it easier to do. But you just pull the anode rod out um, ours is pretty much brand new we only use it one trip that's why it looks so nice and then the release for the pressure release is up top here and ours will stick open and then you just release that and then pull your anode rod out and I like to keep the anode rod in there that way I don't lose it and that's pretty much it for that um, leave the caps off for now uh, have a catch container that I'm gonna set under here um, for when we get to pumping antifreeze through the lines, but um, it's not necessary right now. But I'm gonna show you inside what we need to do for the pump. All right, so back inside, like I said, all this is taken out just so you guys can see what's really going on. You don't have to take the bed apart. If you have this access panel right here on this end of the bed, uh, it had four screws in it in each corner and um, that should be all you're needing but when you're looking at the pump let me get this light turned off when you're looking at the pump um, there's a few things that you're looking at here and there's a lot of lines and a lot of wires but there's there's three little wires here that go to the tank sensors um, this hose on top is a vent hose for the tank this is the fill hose for the tank um, this is the city line right here and it just goes in here um, and it bypasses the pump pretty much so the pump sucks the water out of the tank um, this blue white with the blue stripe on it that comes out of the tank goes through the pump and then up and through the lines the shadow is killing me there maybe you can see that a little bit better so what we're doing um, I have it in bypass right now but um, this hose or this valve right here should be pointing 
in line to whatever you're getting ready to do. If you're going, if you're pumping water from the tank through the system, you want it in line with these. But when you're winterizing, you want to flip it up and catch this hose right here. Now, if you look to the other end of the hose, it doesn't have an end on it. So this is the hose you're looking for when you're getting ready to winterize. So, um, but if you reach in this opening, more than likely you're gonna see the end of it where it doesn't connect anything. You can pull it out into your underbed storage and do all your work right here. You got plenty of room to reach your valve and that's really all you need to get to. So once you get to that and you find your hose and make sure you're bypassed your pump because you're not really bypassing your pump. You're getting your feed water or your feed from this part. It's not really a bypass. Okay, so back to the antifreeze. Um, we bought, I bought five gallons last year because I wasn't sure how much this system was gonna take. And it only takes about a gallon total. Um, I have two out just because I haven't done the pump thing and I don't know how much I'm gonna waste or whatever. But we got minus 50, we're in central Illinois. Um, I'd say if you're, you know, the northern part of the United States, they make a minus 100. Um, there may even be some people from Canada, I don't know. Um, but definitely make sure you're getting the right stuff for your area. And that'll uh, definitely make sure you have success for the next year whenever you open up and no split lines or anything. Okay, so back under the bed, um, go ahead and open up your antifreeze and it should have a seal. And you don't have to take it all the way off, you just need to make an opening in it. And then stick your hose into your tank or into your bottle and I'd put it as far in as you can but we're not ready to pump yet because we still have to bypass the water heater so we'll come over here and the water heater bypass stuff is under the refrigerator in the 17b and it's just it's this this panel right under the fridge uh, it only has two screws, one here and one here. Uh, mine were Phillips. And this looks like a nightmare, but again, it's not. These little valves tell you where the water's going. Right now, they're going into the water heater, so you want to turn them to where they're in line with the lines. And that way, it's, it's just doing this loop for your hot lines. So this is bypassed. Um, antifreeze jugs ready to go. That line is um, going through the pump. And I'm not doing any compressed air on this one, like I said. Um, the pump will pump all the water out. So now that that's going, or this is all set up, um, that pump's ready to suck antifreeze out of that jug. And all we gotta do is come over here and turn on our water pump. And as you can see, it's sucking it right through. So I'm only gonna let it go a little bit because I forgot to put that catch thing out here. So hopefully all it did was push out some more water. It looks like it's just water. Um, so my little catch can's under there and hopefully it'll catch. Actually, I think I'm gonna get a couple blocks and put under that so it's, so I'm definitely catching stuff. Okay, so I got my blocks and my jug and it looks like there is antifreeze in there cause that's a little bit pink. So I wasted a little bit on the ground but probably not much cause it had to fill up the lines still too. So uh, let's head back in and continue. All right, so I'm gonna turn the pump back on. And I'm just gonna go a little bit at a time. And then I'm gonna see how much is in my little catch jug. And that is very pink. 
so there's water let me set you up here there's water in all the line the the main line so i'm going to recap these cap the blue one first because it was like dripping dripping so i'm thinking it was just coming out the cold side um, now it's forcing it through the hot side so um, let's go in and turn the pump back on So we got some some antifreeze on the hot lines. Tighten them up real good. And this is good. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna put it back in the jug and uh, pump out everything or pump everything else. Okay, so if I recall from the first video, that's about how much went through the main line um, before I did any faucets or anything like that. So uh, that's a good sign that we're on the right track here. And like I said, I did spill some when I started. So we're gonna get right back over here to the water pump and that should only go for a second until I start opening up the sink and the shower and everything because the line's full and it's plugged off. There's nowhere for it to go. Actually, there's somewhere for it to go because I think I opened the shower valves. Yeah. So, I'm gonna shut them because I'm not really ready for it yet. But we're gonna start here at the sink. Um, turn the pump back on. And this should only go for a second. there it shut off so everything's pressurized and it should only go now whenever I start opening valves up we're gonna let that run pink and it'll be aerated looking Put the same thing on the cold and let it run pink that's it pump shuts off like it should um, that means there's no leaks anywhere still got some in the jug and now we have stuff in the trap you don't have to pour anything in the trap that's got stuff in the trap turn this light on get my shower chair out of the way I typically prep all this first and I forgot the shower chair so in the tub I like to put the shower head down to the ground or as close to the ground as I can get it that way it's not spraying the whole shower so pump is still on Let's see if I can't hold you some other way uh, pump is still going and now we're gonna run these lines hot side yeah it's coming through shuts it off cold side pink's coming through looking good okay shower done and I'm just gonna leave that lay in the bottom again that's got stuff in the trap now good to go toilet same deal gonna let it run pink's coming through really well and then there's some pink left in the top. I'm gonna leave it there. See how much we got left. And we are right at the very bottom of our gallon. So that's how you do it. Um, basically no tools. Uh, I didn't need the water pump, the hand pump, the manual pump like I did last time. Did exactly one gallon. Um, I'm gonna suck it through there. Now your pump has antifreeze in it for whenever you used it while you were boondocking or whatever. 
but your tank doesn't have antifreeze in it. Now, if you have water in your tank, um, make sure before you finish up everything, you go outside and let's go out there. We'll show you what I'm talking about. Underneath, so here's our water connections right here and see mine's already opened up. But if you're using it, it's going to be like that and you're going to have water in it. I know the last time we left a campsite, I opened it up uh, when we left and just let it drain all the way home. That way when it's sloshing around, it'll get all the way over to the side and it'll clean your tank out or uh, uh, run all the extra water out of your tank. So back inside, like I said, I'm going to pump the rest of that antifreeze. Um, probably just through the sink and that'll be it for this one all right guys thanks for following me along on this one I really hope it helps um, sorry we haven't been putting a lot of stuff out I don't have a lot to put out anyways um, if we're just doing the camper thing we're in our off season or starting it plus we're trying to sell the camper too so we're waiting on our new one to come in I'll probably have a bunch of content on that and um, I do have some shop stuff if you guys are interested um, I'll probably be putting some of that stuff up uh, if not I've really enjoyed working with you guys and showing you guys some basics on the 17b uh, so with that being said thanks for following us along we'll see you on the next one safe travels God bless